A young lady in the t-shirt right there. Vegan Thank outreach. Vegan outreach. Woo! Thank you, Senator, very much for your strong environmental position. Where? where anyway. Okay. The United Nations actually has reiterated that factory farming is contributing more to go greenhouse gas emissions than all of transportation. So I think as a global community, we really need to be the leader in moving more towards non-factory farming for agriculture. It's very egregious. There's 10 billion land animals that we are funneling our precious water and grain through, and 70% of all of our grain could help maybe feed the world hungry. So, as the next leader of the most amazing nation in the world, how can we set the example on a more nutritional, uh, plant-based diet that's more eco-friendly and sustainable, that can maintain our water resources and all of our grain? Thank you very much. Okay, well, it's a great question. Now, now, I, I have to say, in the interest of full disclosure, that I do like a steak once in a while. I'm just, I'm just being honest. I like barbecue. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. But, but the young lady makes a very important point, and that is this: um, uh, right now, our, our food system worldwide is under enormous pressure. It's under enormous pressure. Uh, because, first of all, you've had, as a consequence of climate change, uh, you've had severe uh, changes in weather patterns. We don't fully understand what these effects are, but for example, Australia's had huge drought, which has taken a lot of crops, uh, or you know, the grain production has been much lower. And supplies have tightened. You're starting to see riots around food in places like Haiti and other poor countries around the world. And what is also true is, is that as countries like China and India become wealthier, then they start, start changing their food habits. They start eating more meat, more animal. Uh, and, and, and what happens then is because it takes more grain to produce a pound of beef than uh, if they were just eating the grain, what ends up happening is, is that it puts huge pressure on food supplies. Now, Americans would actually benefit from a change in diet. I don't think that I don't think that I don't think that that's something I don't think that that's something that we should legislate. Uh, but I think that it is something that as part of our overall health care system, we should encourage because for example, if we reduced obesity down to the rates that existed in 1980, we would save the Medicare system a trillion dollars. We would reduce diabetes rates. We would reduce heart disease. So, and, and, and so the fact that we subsidize some of these big agribusiness operations that are not necessarily producing healthy food, and we discourage or we don't subsidize farmers who are producing fruits and vegetables and small-scale farming that gets produce immediately too. Uh, consumers as opposed to having it processed. The fact that we're not doing more to make sure that healthy food is in the school. All those things don't make sense. And I think it does, it is important for us to re-examine our overall food policy so that we're encouraging good habits and not bad habits. For example, you know, just making sure that there are more fruits and vegetables in school lunch programs, that would make an enormous difference in how our children's diets develop. That would make us healthier over the long term. It would cut our health care costs, and maybe it would help uh, people elsewhere in the world who are in le less wealthy countries feed themselves as well. So it's a great question. It's important. All right. I've got time for one more question. I've, I've only got time for It's got to be a guy. It's got to be a guy. I had to be fair. 